Oh, greetings, good people. Bienvenidos a una nueva emisión de En Órbita. Hoy con una entrevista que hace parte de nuestro cubrimiento del Hey Festival, pero que trasciende las barreras del tiempo y llega a ustedes en este mismo instante. Nos encontramos aquí con Evie Wilde, es una de las jóvenes escritoras británicas que el British Council ha traído al Hey Festival Juvenil para que hablen con la gente aquí en Cartagena, sobre todo con los estudiantes. Evie, welcome to En Orbita. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you for having me. Uh, let's start talking about success. Um, you have an awarded novel, which is called and I'll, After the Fire, A Still Small Voice. That's right, yeah. And you've just uh, launched a new one? I have in June, yeah. All the birds singing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now you have your own Wikipedia page. <laughs> Isn't it demented? Is it? It's very, very strange, yeah. Um, there are a lot of things that aren't quite correct on the Wikipedia page and, and they get repeated and that sort of thing. So it's sort of... It's a strange thing to see yourself uh, on Google as someone you don't recognize. Some of the information that, that I got during my background check on you um, was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> they, say, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. they say you grew up on a farm. Yes, I grew up in New South in, Wales. Yeah, I grew up in London um, in a place called Peckham, which is quite an urban part of London. Here in Cartagena, uh, there are four of you with the British Council, uh, four new British novelists, uh, uh, and but three of you weren't born in the in the UK. Um, where is home for you? Is it Australia? Is it London? Um, it slightly depends where I am, um, but I, there's an interesting homesickness I think that happens when you're from two places. I feel that. London is my home, but I miss Australia. Um, and when I've tried to live in Australia, I miss London. So it's a, it's a juggling. Is that what you write about isolation? Because you miss Australia some, some time? I think so. I think being in a busy city, um, you can sometimes long for, to be alone. And, um, and, and writing is quite an isolating job, I suppose. So in that sense, I, I am quite isolated um, when I'm writing. But... I think it's it's a longing for that landscape that I have when I'm in uh, when I'm in London. Um, what kind of characters do you like to build? Um, I like to look at um, people who are neither good or bad, who have done perhaps quite bad things, um, who it's it's not obvious if you should feel um, empathy for them at first. Um, who wouldn't be the normal sort of Hollywood version of a, of a main character. So that tells me that you don't believe in the conventional structure of a hero. Yeah, I think there's something much more interesting that can be done. Um, in my last book, um, the protagonist is female and she's, um, she's, not tradi she's not pretty, she's not beautiful. I think there's a... Um, There, there are a lot of books where the, the main female character, her, the whole point of her is that she falls in love or is fallen in love with. And, um, and she's a big, strong woman. Um, and she's tough and angry. And she's not... Um, there's, a, there's an idea that women should either be, uh, you know, blonde hair, blue eyed, which is traditionally beautiful, or black hair and green eyes, which is untraditionally beautiful. And I just wanted her to be a person. Um, And, and to be able to move around without thinking about a sort of male or female gaze on her. In, in, in that way, you can recreate reality by liberating your characters from the burden of the beauty. Exactly, yeah. And without... Um, it means that whenever a male character comes into shot, you're not immediately working out how they're going to fall in love. Yeah, because that we've learned about uh, from Hollywood. Mm. Exactly. Let's talk about your process. How do you write? How do you begin? Um, I normally begin um, with a scene that interests me. So I don't, I don't have the whole thing plotted out in my head beforehand. I normally have an idea of uh, a single person in a landscape or in a building. And I um, work on that scene, which generally comes more or less in the middle of the book. And then I pad out either way. So um, 
it's not it's a complicated messy way of starting but it works for me it's a messy way but does it come from any other exercise do you draw do you paint i used to paint um but i'm not very good at it so i, I stopped but i do look at Uh, visual stimulus quite a lot I, I look at um, I collect old photographs um, old family snapshots in um, in like flea markets and, and antique stores when they're selling off old old photographs they found I really enjoy looking at other people's families so that kind of that quite often sparks something off do you believe in inspiration um I don't think I do. I, I believe in um, in interest. I believe in obsession, but inspiration seems like something that's too instant. That it sh that it could be one single thing that sets off such a big thing as a novel. Um, I think I am spurred on by a feeling of atmosphere and texture, um, but inspiration feels um, too magical in a way to apply. You take part in, in another process of the book industry. You have a bookshop. Review, is it called? Okay. Um, is it funny, or is it weird when anyone comes to buy your book to your store? Does it happen to you often? It does happen quite a lot, which is lovely. Um, the nicest thing is when someone comes in and doesn't know that I wrote the book and asks for it. That's a really nice feeling. Um, but a lot of the time people come in because they're writing too and they know where they can find me so they can ask advice and, and that's quite nice as well. It's, it's sort of a, it feels very much like a writer's bookstore. What do you like to read? What kinds of books do you like to read? Um, I love Australian fiction. I think there's some really interesting stuff coming out of Australia at the moment and Irish as well. Um, Tim Winton um, was the writer that made me first start writing. Um, And they're real, um, they're about characters. They're not so much about plot. They're about, um, again, a, one person alone against uh, a landscape. And um, I'm interested in books that, that problematize people, problematize good and bad and that sort of thing. Uh, let's talk about your trip to Colombia, you, you being here. How do you like it in Cartagena? Do you like it? I love Cartagena, yeah. It's my first time in this part of the world, so it's a hell of an introduction. Um, it's so beautiful and it's amazing to be so close to the sea with the wind coming in. It's lovely. Have you had the opportunity to travel a lot due to your work as a, as a writer? I have. I've been to Vietnam and Moscow and Um, all over the UK, um, yeah, it's it's been really lovely. In Vietnam, uh, is it because uh, the protagonist of your first novel ends up in the in the Vietnam War? I think there was that was an element of it. Um, yeah, and certainly they had they were very interested um, to hear uh, an English Australian um, kind of point of view on it, um, and it, it it brought up a lot of interesting conversations. Okay, um, uh, so how, how, and you'll be you'll be visiting Bogota in the next few days. Yeah. Okay, so are you excited? I'm really excited. Um, I'm going to go and talk to um, at some schools, which will be really interesting. Um, I've talked to a school already in, in Cartagena. We all went and answered lots of questions, which was really like one of the joys I think of doing this is, is speaking to young writers. Um, Last, my last question would be to ask you for some advice for new writers, for beginning writers. But I would say give yourself a lot of time. It takes um, most people, especially me, it takes a very long time. So three or four years per novel. Um, and I know a lot of people kind of imagine that you can do it in three weeks or something, but it takes time and it's important to give the novel breathing space so you can work out what's happening. Um, so that would be my main advice, just don't expect to finish it too quickly. Okay, Ivi, thank you very much you. for this interview. Pleasure. It's been great. Bueno, señores, aquí termina esta entrevista. Recuerden que la pueden ver completa en www.enorbita.tv que pueden seguir nuestras emisiones en radio y que además pueden vernos en televisión, así que esperen una próxima emisión. Hasta luego. Thank you.